It's very strange that husbands three, she seems to have that lady proud. Then maids and blades make Robin see the truth that three's a crowd. I think they're ready now. Ready? Aye, ready. Aye. Ready all. My shaft! No, I think it was mine. Mirabile, someone's hit it. That's a good shot. As clean a shaft as you could wish to see. Yes, even for Rolf here. My count among one of the best bowmen in England. As good as yourself, Robin. Well, in some ways. Mine only clipped its wings. That shaft belongs to Maid Marian. Well, what prize have you won, Marian? A new hunting bow and a score of arrows. Haven't you got enough trophies at Fitzwalter Manor? You don't seem very proud of me. And after all, it was you who taught me how to shoot. Yes, but I didn't expect you to forget all your feminine accomplishments. I have not. What about that dish of venison I cooked you last week? Oh, that. Oh, it tasted exactly like crow. Well, please, yeah. must we talk about food? I'm starving, can't we, now? You know our rule. Little John's out looking for a guest, and we don't eat until he returns. What's that? A sapling fallen across the path. Well, get down and move it. Well, well, maybe it's a trap. Or would you like me to? By your leave, my lady. <gasps> Thieves! Do you intend to murder me? No, madam. To rob me? No, madam. Then I'm free to go? Not till you've eaten and rested and been given safe escort through Sherwood. They say there are some desperate rogues here in the forest. Gently, girl. Oh, I am about to die. Do we have to wait for little John? Your life is saved, Friar. Here comes little John now. Robin. We have a guest coming, the Lady Geraldine Pumphrey. Oh. Off with you, Marion, before you're seen. Pumphrey? Could she be the kinswoman to Baron Pumphrey? Oh, he's her husband, unfortunately. Why unfortunately? Well, he's a coward for one thing. I don't believe it. Would you dare say that to his face, little John? Aye, but he won't show it here. Ran like a hare, even left his lady behind. That can't be Lord Clarence. You sound as if you knew something of this craven Baron. Something better than the ugly tale little John tells of him. Lord Pumphrey is an old friend of my father. You'd best be off. No, I won't leave till I hear the truth about him from Lady Pumphrey herself. All right, well, go and hide. Look, get up that tree, but keep quiet. Welcome, my lady, to our leafy home. A welcome which I did not ask for. Why have your men stopped me? Little John? Huh? Well, I told you. She had a man with her. We thought he might be worth a purse or yes, something. Yes, a mere formality, my lady. We often like to have a chat with people who pass our way. I thought friends of King Richard were never molested in Sherwood Forest. Indeed they're not. Are you loyal to the King? I am. And your escort? Baron Pumphrey's reputation as a soldier of the king needs no defense. But he deserted you. If he knew that friends of the king were safe here, why should he run away? He... he must... I don't know. It's clear enough that the lady is well rid of her husband. No. The man who ran away was not my husband. Oh, you were tricked by him. No, I hired him to play the part. And he would have succeeded if you hadn't interfered. 
Perhaps you'd like to explain. Yes, sir, I mean to. It's your... Oh! oh. <laughs> there! Are you convinced now? Who is this young woman? Uh, a friend. Uh, she has a habit of dropping in. Yes, but who is she? Ah, yes. Uh, the, the lady... The Lady Diana, seeking game for her mighty bow. Robin's little joke. I'm Marion Fitzwalter. Indeed. Clarence has often told me of his visits to Fitzwalter Manor. Oh, yes, he used to dandle her on his knee. Oh, but this is a pleasure, Marion. Robin, uh, your pardon, it is foodie, sir. <laughs> For May, I must leave you, my love. I must bid you farewell. To the wars I must go, to a land far away. But I'll return on one fine day. In the month of May, in the month of May. Well done, Alan. Sure. Now, Lady Pomfret, won't you tell us about the false Lord Pomfret? Yes. His name is Percival. He was a hireling. And a name... Why did you hire this man to impersonate your husband? I thought to stave off for a little while the seizure of our castle and lands, all forfeit to the crown, since the law decrees me to be a widow. Then poor Sir Clarence is... No, he is alive. May I ask how you know this? I had a message from Clarence, from France. He said he was returning to England. Then you're not a widow. In truth, no. But in the eyes of the law, I shall be a widow tomorrow. How is that? Norman law says a man is presumed dead if he is absent from his home for seven years. Tomorrow, Clarence will have been gone just seven years. And as a widow, you have not the right to own property. Exactly. I had news that Clarence would return any day. I went to Dover to meet him. I waited many days. But he didn't come. Why didn't you wait longer? I didn't dare. The time was so short. I thought perhaps I could hold off the bailiffs until Clarence arrived. And you could have done it too, if little John and Quentin hadn't frightened Percival off. Exactly. Would you venture again, Lady Pomfret, with a brave man at your side? It's hopeless. By tomorrow, LeBlond, the Earl of Bruxton, will have taken possession. This Norman Earl, LeBlond, does he know your husband? No, he's never seen him. That's why I dared. At least she dared. It was the man who lacked courage. To restore your faith in men, in place of one impostor, you shall have another. My lady, I offer you my services. Oh, thank you. Thank you both. Now, if we hope to reach your castle before the Norman seizes it, we should start at once. Yes. If only we could deceive him long enough until Clarence returns. A dedicated knight, Sir Clarence, to leave so charming and capable a wife to go fighting in heathen lands. Thank you, Friar. And I promise you that when we reach Pomfret Castle, Master Robin will be treated no less tenderly than if he were truly my husband. Guy, Rolf, saddle the horses. Mine as well. Do you ride alone to Fitzwalter Manor? No, with you. To Pomfret Castle. Oh? For curiosity? For safety. Safety? Well, in that case, you'd better bring your prize bow and a sheaf of arrows. Candelabra. One oak cabinet. Have you got that? One oak cabinet. The Pumphrey Crest. Make a note to have that removed. Uh, to be replaced by the La Blonde Crest, my lord. Naturally. Where did Pumphrey keep his wine? The Pomfret cellars were always renowned. The 
Leblond sellers. To be sure, my lord. The Leblond sellers. Who are you? The Baron Pomfret. Pomfret? Yes. After you and Lady Pomfret had become separated in the forest, what did you do then? I came directly back here in hopes that she had managed to uh, find her way home. Hmm. Well, if she's not back by tomorrow, we can always send out a search party. Thank you. In the meantime, what about a toast in honor of your homecoming? Hmm? Oh! Oh, yes, I've been away so long, I've almost forgotten how to be a host. <laughs> uh, let me offer you some wine. Thank you. How foolish of me, I've been away so long. Thank you. Welcome home. And now, my dear Pumphrey, you must be weary after your journey. Oh, yes, I am. I'm very tired. If you'll excuse me, I'll retire. Of course. If there is any news of your lady, I'll call you. Oh, uh, thank you, my lord. And uh, thank you for looking after the old uh, homestead. <sighs> Good night. Good night. There must be someone who can identify Pumphrey. Only the castle retainers, my lord, and they've all returned to their villages. It would be morning before I could round them up. Lady Pumphrey. My lord Leblond. How kind of you to be here to welcome us. Allow me to present the Lady Marion Fitzwalter. Your servant, my lady. And this is my husband, Baron Pumphrey. Baron Pumphrey? Your servant, my lord. A welcome return, my lord. Home at last. And everything just as it was, eh, Geraldine? To the last stone, my lord. Uh, here is a complete inventory. Oh, not now, not now. Where are the retainers? We couldn't be responsible for the servants, my lord. When Lady Pomfret was away so long, why? Scoundrels! I'll leave some of my own people to attend you and my lady. A household staff is all I shall require for the time. Steward, cook and scullery people. <laughs> and you're the one to see that they do their jobs, eh? Just as in the old days. And no better time to start than now. I'll have a fire laid and see to some refreshment. Come, my dear. Ah, nothing like treading the flagstones of your own keep again. So it would seem. I think the occasion calls for a drink. Oh, an excellent idea. A cup of wine, my lord, to uh, celebrate my homecoming. I could not decline. Now, uh, where used I to... Um... Ah, hmm. <laughs> I almost forgot. Yes, of course. You've been away so long. Oh, Uncle Clarence. 
Uncle Clarence. Forgive me. <clears throat> you run to the orchard and pick some ripe pears and the handsomest grapes you can find in the arbor. You'll find a big cheese in the buttery. Carry it up and lay a table near the fire. You'll bring a steak pudding, some salt herring, and prepare the meat for a rabbit pie. Now, smartly, all of you. There, you see how it's done. Now, if you ever expect to reach a man's heart, you'd better turn that bow and arrow in for a skillet. Don't preach cookery to me now. What better time than now to mend your ways? Oh, Robin, be serious. But I am. All right, have your fun. But be careful of Le Blonde. There's something in the way he looks at you. Well, Master Notarius, there are now two Baron Pumphrits. But it's most irregular. Can it be that one of them is an imposter? Yes, I suppose that's just possible. It's also just possible that they are both as false as a maiden's promise. My lord, both? I'm tired of this nonsense. I shall fetch the Sheriff of Nottingham. He'll soon tell me who these rogues are. Be off, draw up my deed of ownership. <coughs> what a neighbor of blonde, an empty cup. Ah, Baron. I was just leaving. Oh, but my lady is preparing a table. Why, surely you'll stay and take something with us? Another time, perhaps. I really must be going. Oh, but Lady Pomfret will be most upset. I'll see whether she can't prevail upon you to stay. In with it, Geraldine, and insist that LeBlanc stay. Is he leaving? Oh, he says he has to. But surely the sooner we get rid of him, the better. I feel a lot safer having him where we can keep an eye on him. Now, see what you can do. Mm hmm? Hmm. If he leaves after seeing this, then we've got nothing to worry about. Why do you say that? Because then, obviously, he's a fool. He's gone. You're the only one I could think of who knows Pumphrey. I came to you. I'm very glad you did. It will give me great pleasure to expose a pair of frauds. We'll go at once. Lord Pumphrey was zealous indeed to leave cooking like this simply to enlighten infidels. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Robin. Perhaps you wouldn't mind giving Marion the recipe for that pudding. But I should be delighted. If you could take your mind off your stomach for a moment, Robin, I'm worried. The man that takes his mind off the good things in life, Marion, forgets what he's fighting for. But Marion, dear, what is it that worries you? Well, why did LeBlanc disappear like that? Because he suspects something, that's why. And all we do is sit cosily around this table sampling titbits. <laughs> but isn't that exactly what Lord Pumphrey would do if he were here now? If this LeBlanc is around somewhere spying on me, well, the best thing to do is to behave like a family man home from the wars. Robin. Ah, thank you, Geraldine. This is the way to warm a slipper, Marion, so that the warmth reaches right down to the toes. Well, be careful not to singe it. Uh, watch your Aunt Geraldine. All right, you can play house if you want to. I'm going to take a look round. I don't know. Girls just don't seem to appreciate the home these days. Serpent, die! Clarence! 
Lord Pumfret. Stand aside, Geraldine. I'll let this carpet knight's blood... Clarence, put up your sword. Not until I've run this white stealer through. Yes, my starling. All this was in your interest. It was, my Leonard. But of course. I didn't know when you would be returning. And tomorrow the estate is forfeit. So Robin here had to pretend he was you. Yes, I suppose you're right. Yes, it was the proper thing to do. Clarence, dear, you haven't embraced me. My sweet. <clears throat> I... Heard a noise. And who in the name of thunder are you, sir? Uh, the Baron Pumphrey. Ah, another wife, Steve. No, no, Clarence, dear. No. Let me explain. Enough of explanation. Clarence. Was he in my interest, too? Well, yes, dear, he was. <laughs> it's LeBlond and the sheriff with him. The scullery, quick. On your feet, you dog. Let's see who you really are. What, again? It seems you have more company, my pigeon. Well, either explain yourselves or defend yourselves. I don't care which. A thousand apologies, Baron Pumphrey. But you're not. Fool. This gentleman's appetite for land is greater than his judgment. But I swear. Good day to you, my lord. My lady. Idiot. Clarence, dear, you haven't had a very happy homecoming. But there'll be no more intruders, I promise you. Now, let's celebrate with some wine. Yeah, a good idea. Yes, I've forgotten where I keep it. I've been away so long. Um, and no, not that. Allow me. Oh. <laughs> Robin, do you still I think... I know. I owe more to a strong arm on the longbow than I do to a light hand on the skillet. I admit it. And as much as you relish Lady Pomfret's chicken, you're still willing to eat crow. Agreed? Yes, my eaglet. <laughs> To Lord Pumphrey. All three of them. <laughs> Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men. Feared by the bad, loved by the good. Robin Hood, Robin Hood. He called the greatest archers to a tavern on the green. They vowed to help the people of the king. They handled all the trouble on the English country scene and still found plenty of time to sing. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men. Feared by the bad, loved by the good, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood. 